group pteridophytes is the fern and allies group. Pteridophytes are vascular plants, meaning they contain a well-developed vascular system made up of two types of tissues, called xylem and phloem. Pteridophytes are spore-bearing plants that do not produce seeds, fruit, or flowers. Pteridophytes all have stems with vascularized tissues, and most have vascularized roots and leaves. Pteridophytes reproduce via spores and they require water for fertilization. For this reason, they are most often found in cool, moist, humid, and shady areas. Pteridophytes reproduce both sexually and asexually. Sexual Reproduction Since ferns are the most recognizable species of pteridophytes, I will go over their life cycle. Plants have an alteration of generations, meaning they display two plant stages or generations in their life cycle. They include the gametophyte generation and the sporophyte generation. Plants spend part of their life cycle in the gametophyte stage and part in the sporophyte stage. The main and dominant plant generation of ferns and pteridophytes is the sporophyte generation. For example, the plant body of a fern that you see and that everyone is familiar with is the sporophyte generation. Let's start the discussion of a fern's life cycle with a spore. Ferns develop from a germinating spore into a young gametophyte. The young gametophyte grows into a tiny, green, flat, often heart-shaped structure called a prothallus. On the underside of the prothallus grows rhizoids, which are root-like or hair-like structures that they use to anchor onto the ground. The prothallus is the mature gametophyte generation of the fern. The male gametophyte plant produces the male sex organ, called an antheridium. The female gametophyte plant produces the female sex organ, called an archegonium. Antheridium produces sperm, and archegonium produces a single egg. These sex cells, the sperm and egg, are called gametes. Many pteridophytes have separate sexes, meaning there are male gametophyte plants that bear antheridia, and female gametophyte plants that bear archegonia. Other pteridophytes produce male and female sex organs on the same gametophyte plant. The sex organs grow on the underside of the gametophyte plant, meaning on the underside of the prothallus. During sexual reproduction, the sperm from the antheridium swims through a thin film of water on the ground to reach the egg within the archegonium. A single sperm fuses with the egg in a process called fertilization, which results in a zygote. The zygote is the first stage of the sporophyte generation of the fern's life cycle. The zygote grows into a multicellular embryo within the archegonium. As the embryo matures, it grows into a sporophyte plant. The sporophyte is attached to and dependent upon the gametophyte plant. The young sporophyte is a young fern plant. Eventually, the prothallus withers and dies, and the sporophyte develops into an independent plant. For ferns, the sporophyte plant develops into the fern body you are familiar with. The fern sporophyte is composed of a horizontal underground stem called a rhizome. The fern rhizome bears roots and leaves called fronds. When the leaves emerge from the ground, they are tightly coiled. These coiled leaves are called fiddleheads because they look like the top of a violin. 
Spore production usually occurs on the fern's fronds within cases called sporangia. Sporangia are usually born in clusters called sori. When the spores are mature, they are released and dispersed away from the parent plant. Once the spore lands in a suitable spot, it germinates into a new gametophyte plant body or prothallus, and the cycle continues. Spores represent the first stage in the gametophyte generation. Asexual reproduction. Vegetative growth. Pteridophytes can reproduce vegetatively in several different ways. One way they can reproduce is by a process called fragmentation. This occurs when a fragment of the plant, such as part of the rhizome, breaks off and is dispersed away from the parent plant. When it finds a suitable environment, the fragment grows into a new individual plant. Another way some pteridophytes can reproduce is by forming buds or tissues that detach from the plant. These propagules are dispersed away from the parent plant and grow into new individual plants. This process is called budding. Sometimes the buds or tissues are formed on the leaves. As the leaves grow, they droop towards the ground. When the buds, tissues touch the soil, they take root and grow into a new plant. Similarly, in some species of ferns, when the tips of the fronds droop and touch the soil, they take root and form a new fern. This creates a walking effect. Some ferns reproduce with their underground rhizomes. The rhizomes will grow outward and sprout new plants along the way. Spores, fragments, tissues, and buds disperse by wind, water, and animals. Pteridophytes are generally divided into two main groups. They include the lycophytes and the manilophytes. The first major group of the pteridophytes is the lycophytes. Lycophytes are the oldest of the vascular plants. Living members of the lycophytes include club mosses, spike mosses, and quillworts. Note. Club mosses and spike mosses are not true mosses. Lycophytes are solely herbaceous plants. Even though they have a vascular system, these plants are relatively small. Most lycophytes are terrestrial, but some are epiphytes, meaning they can grow on other larger plants. Some are aquatic or semi-aquatic. Lycophytes are often called fern allies because they share similar life cycles with ferns. However, lycophytes differ mainly from true ferns by leaf structure. Lycophytes typically have microphylls which are small, narrow leaves with a single, unbranched vein or vascular strand. So that means, one vein that runs down the midsection of the leaf. The second group of the pteridophytes are the manilophytes. Manilophytes include ferns, whisk ferns, horsetails, and their allies. Lycophytes typically have microphylls and manilophytes typically have megaphylls. Megaphylls are larger, more complex leaves with multiple or branching veins or vascular strands. Manilophytes are mostly terrestrial, but some grow on rocks, and some are epiphytes. 
Manilophytes can range in size from just a few centimeters to tree ferns growing over 80 feet tall. Most are herbaceous, but some are woody. This concludes the video. For additional videos on biological resources, please go to my back bio page.